Um, okay, so uh, we also have a live on our YouTube. We will share with you the link uh, today, today in evening, <laughs> when we finish uh, our first day of our seminar. So I think uh, we are ready to start. So guys, are you ready to start? Please uh, write plus in the Zoom message. Oh, yes, first reactions. <laughs> What about other guys? Are you here? Are you ready? Are you steady? <laughs> and go? We are okay. We are ready too. So, um, so I uh, I'm going to start uh, now. I will uh, share my screen, and we will go with uh, we will start with the presentation for today. Okay, uh, do you see my presentation is okay? I hope it's okay. Yes. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, guys, so really great to see you in our first day of uh, our aerial robotics seminar, uh, which supported by Coex and Studica. And today uh, I will tell you about our plan for two days. And um, we will provide a short introduction with our companies, with us as a trainers and with you as attenders. So uh, please be ready to uh, pay attention in the Zoom chat. Uh, please write us the questions, messages, your reactions. And uh, this is our small group. Uh, to get the new knowledge in drones, to get the basic knowledge of drones, and to know, uh, to know about uh, how to develop and uh, how you can upgrade your level in the drone, in drone education, and more, <laughs> I hope. So uh, let's start. And first of all, I would like to provide uh, uh, introduction. So let's get acquainted. Uh, my name is Svetlana Salomatnikova and I am aerial robotics skill manager and I uh, my responsible is to organize uh, drone events and to help you um, upgrade your skill from the competition, from the webinars and uh, other activities. Uh, also I would like to introduce with you our trainers, uh, Timofey Kondratiev. Timofey, are you here? Please uh, say Hello, us everyone. some words. Yeah, hi, hi Timofey. Nice to see you. Timofey, uh, please tell us uh, some information about you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm in the field of drones for more than well, three or four years, maybe, and I started in COEX and uh, um, I attended several competitions and I trained a lot of uh, participants of different competitions. Uh, right now, I mostly uh, teach how to program drones and uh, participate in the drone uh, software development. So I know many interesting things about what I'm going to talk with you about today so i hope you enjoy the things that i will share with you yeah thank you to my fa so and uh, our next trainer is uh, elena silverstova lena please connect with us and say some words about yourself uh, hello everyone. Yes, I'm trainer. I've organized uh, various competition uh, in the field um, aerial robotics, but I also I'm here uh, just for fun because we will play <laughs> Kahoot together um, and uh, see you <laughs> later. 
Uh, yeah, guys, so we have prepared some interesting activities for you, and uh, we will share with you some later. It's uh, our surprise for you, of course. So, and uh, now we go to our uh, next topic. So this is uh, our tradition. Our tradition uh, with, uh, in our activities. So uh, we will be glad uh, if you have opportunity to turn your camera on and we will provide a common photo together and uh, it will be in our memories, in our Telegram group. So don't hesitate to turn on your cameras. Oh, great, I see Natasha. Hi, Natasha. <laughs> Oh, hi, Kirill. Hi. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, guys, if you, if you can turn on your cameras in several minutes, uh, it will be really great. Oh, hi, Shrey. <laughs> hi, Harshal. Harshal, we have seen you. <laughs> oh, hi, Joy. <laughs> Sorry for the name. <laughs> But if uh, you can uh, correct me, if it's okay, <laughs> it will be okay. Oh, hi, Alek. Hi, Rashi. Hi. Hi, hi, Sachit. Oh, sorry, Sachit, maybe. Yeah. Oh, hi, Afonso. Uh, maybe I remember Afonso, you are from Portugal. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Great. Hi, Pars. Hello. 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 Okay. So, guys, I think uh, we can start a uh, big common photo. Uh, but uh, also, other uh, guys, you can join us. We will, you, you have uh, several minutes for it. <laughs> oh, hi, Hardik. Oh, hi, Hushi. Oh, hi, Davis. Oh, hi, uh, Bravna. Oh, guys, great. Hi, Shafham. <laughs> oh, Kirill uh, uh, connected to us. Uh, Kirill connected to us uh, from uh, other device. Uh, good solution. <laughs> uh, Okay, hey guys, I think you are ready to start uh, to get a, to take a best photo. So where is your smile? Your smile will be as a photo in three, two, one, just smile. Great, just a moment I will save our photo. And let's try again. Three, two, one, smile. Hey, great, great. Nice pictures, guys, nice pictures. And uh, the last chance uh, uh, to create a smile and fix it <laughs> and save it. Okay, three, two, one, smile. Great, perfect, guys. Thank you for these uh, good pictures. Thank you for your good mood and for your positive energy. It's really important for us. So, and now we continue our seminar. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, some rules uh, during our webinar. So, uh, please uh, supervisor for your microphone and uh, try don't uh, turn on it uh, if you don't plan to speak into microphone. And uh, if it's possible, it's not necessary, uh, uh, you can uh, rename in uh, our Zoom, you can write your name and country and it will help to other attendees to understand uh, who are you and from each country you. 
uh, where you're from and it will uh, help to provide the best networking. So it's not necessary, but if you want, it will be great. Okay. And uh, the most important uh, rule during our webinar. So guys, if you have a question, you should to write your question into Zoom chat and we, um, we will answer uh, on this question. So, and uh, now I will tell you about our program for today. So, as the first part of our webinar, of our seminar, um, will be consist of uh, introduction. We have passed it. Uh, then will be aerial robotics skill. I will tell you about aerial robotics or more, about education, about... Uh, and I will get you many interesting information, many interesting facts. Uh, then we will go to theory, drone design basics, introduction to ROAS, uh, and which subject you can learn with drones and about open source projects. Uh, then we will have a, a coffee break time, duration 10 minutes. Uh, then we will go to practice time. Uh, we will work with the simulator environment and uh, we will demonstrate you um, and we will tell you about ROS architecture in Clover. Then we will, uh, we will we prepare for you a mini game. It's uh, our small surprise for you. And uh, this game will help you to, uh, uh, to fix your knowledge and uh, and repeat uh, the most important steps. And finally, we will talk uh, about the block programming and uh, we will close, uh, we will finish our first day by briefing, so evening briefing. Okay, I think uh, we are ready to start. And we will go to our first topic, aero robotic skill. So many of you, uh, we will, we, will, uh, we have got a uh, feedback from you that you uh, has a beginner level of knowledge in drones, but you know that drones, uh, it's a very popular vehicles uh, in our modern world. So, and let me introduce our company, uh, Copter Express, Coex, uh, we produce drones for educational and industrial. And uh, this project allows us to prepare specialists. We have started from Clover. This is our educational drones and goes to the Pelican. It is uh, our industrial drones for delivery. And also our product, um, our, one of our main products, it's a drone point. Uh, this is a system for providing autonomous uh, delivery goods uh, by drones. Uh, this system allows to save uh, goods during a uh, long time. So uh, also uh, drones uh, cover many areas of applications such as uh, searching, filming, security, inspections, science and agriculture and of course drone swarms it's the most popular part of um, current uh, drone development so but uh, as i said before we have a problem so in um, today today we don't have uh, enough number of qualified specialists in the autonomous drones uh, for hardware and software development and that is why COEX as a global partner provides the ecosystem of education and um, industrial application drones and preparing specialists for this, um, uh, for this uh, professional parts. So we cooperate with schools, colleges, universities and other industrial companies uh, to provide the uh, complex education, to provide the, the we starting from the 
school students and also we uh, give uh, research projects for the universities and this ecosystem this ecosystem allows us to get the uh, to get a good uh, professional who can work with drone uh, with um, this equipment so and also uh, as i said before we um, we and studica we are partners and we work together studica uh, our partner and we work with um, studica support us uh, in the uh, drone uh, and drone uh, equipment too so um, if you have any questions about it we will be glad to answer on it so uh, what about the uh, Clover drone and what is it? So we have um, open source hardware and software. So the main uh, feature of it is flight controller PixHawk and single board computer Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this open source hardware allows us to, uh, to provide uh, to provide uh, uh, in, uh, to, to provide uh, uh, educational process uh, starting from educational drones and goes to the industrial drones to pelican so uh, all drones has uh, the same equipment the same brain in uh, their in their equipment so and uh, it is a really good solution to start teach students and finally to get a good specialist who knows how it works and who knows uh, how how they can applicate apply this equipment on the drones so uh, and uh, coex coex clover is an educational product um, has a three big the three main um, three main stages uh, during the education. First of all, assemble, then flights, and finally it's programming using a uh, ROS system, Python, C++, C++ languages, computer vision, and uh, other um, features that you can um, apply on Coex Clover drone. So uh, some words about our educational trajectory. So uh, we, can, uh, we consider that the main idea, the main goal, it's uh, to prepare specialists who can uh, work with uh, open source technologies, who can create something new, who can join to the project and work on it. So, and we consider that we can reach it, reach out using, um, using uh, next steps. So first of all, we provide the practice using simulation environment, such as the gazebo. Uh, then uh, you can practice your skill on the real drone, Coex Clover. Uh, it allows you to get a fundamental knowledge. Then, you can uh, apply this knowledge um, in the competitions, for example, or in the online contest uh, or offline contest uh, uh, that has a feature with project solution. Uh, this is uh, photos of our educational centers. Uh, that provides many competitions and that provides a drone laboratory uh, with uh, research projects. Uh, on these videos, you can uh, watch how we provide the different competition during the pandemic time. So using the um, online technologies such as a gazebo simulation, a live stream on YouTube and a remote venue in the drone laboratory and, and the connection from other countries and from other regions uh, 
via online tools. So, and uh, also I would like to add um, some information about our big competition uh, named World Skills. So we start competition for students from 12 years old and we don't have the high level of the, uh, of the age and uh, many uh, people who want to provide retraining of, the, of their skills uh, come to us to get new knowledge and we provide uh, education for them. So, and finally, I would like to share with you um, our page, our website page, uh, where we collect uh, all our educational materials and you can use it and enjoy it, of course. And uh, uh, some words about our community. So we have open source technologies. We have a big community around the world and it allows us to grow not only uh, extend uh, by <laughs> territory, uh, but also we extend uh, by quality and uh, each our event, each uh, member of our community uh, contributes something new in our technologies because open source, open for all. And uh, you can join to us and we will be glad to help you to grow up your skills and uh, also uh, accept uh, your suggestions and your views for uh, features for Clover or Pelican or drone industry in a wall. Um, so <laughs> thank you for your attention. And uh, now maybe you have a questions about our introduction information. I will be glad to answer on it. Uh, but also, you of course, you can uh, ask uh, later. Okay. So uh, if you don't have any questions for now, uh, I would like to give awards to Timofey and Lena, and they will start uh, our, <laughs> our part of theory in drone education. So Timofey, Lena, are you ready to start? Yes, we are ready. Okay, before you start, uh, I uh, I have to ask uh, our attenders. So guys, please uh, write uh, into Zoom chat. Are you ready to um, to accept the new part of our seminar? Sorry, okay, great, great, perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, Timofey, Lena, welcome. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen now. Uh, you need to, pro can you ex give me the access to sharing the screen? Yeah, yeah, sorry, just a moment. Okay, you can try it. All right, now it is working. Yeah. Okay. So the first topic is uh, drone design basics. Uh, can you see my screen fine? Is it a good quality or not? Yeah, we see you and we hear you. Agreed. So, but, but it's my... Uh, my opinion. So, guys, what what about your site? Okay, great, perfect. Thanks. Uh, so, what 
to begin with. If you don't know what uh, drones are and how they operate, well, <clears throat> a few basic uh, things about drones. So this is a Clover drone, how it looks like. And uh, I actually have my own Clover drone as well. I will show you later uh, when we start flying. And uh, uh, this is uh, the diagram of all the possible components uh, uh, you can connect to Clover. This is not the limit. Uh, this is not limited by only these components. So you can add your own things if you want to. For example, in Raspberry Pi, you can connect different other sensors and devices. But basic, basic thing uh, about Clover is, or any other drone, is the flight controller. So this is the kind of a brain for the drone. This thing uh, will, this, ha this thing has internal sensors such as gyroscope, accelerometer, and uh, compass, uh, and uh, it uses this data to determine drone's position in space. And uh, uh, it also, you can also connect GPS uh, to the flight controller as well as the onboard computer, which is Raspberry Pi 4 in this case, via USB. And this onboard computer can give you the extra source of positioning for your drone. So this flight controller uh, will get data from Raspberry Pi that has camera and uh, laser range finder, and it will give the exact position of the drone relative to some objects uh, on the ground. Uh, I will show you later how it works. And uh, the power comes from the battery. The battery connects to the power distribution board, PDB. Uh, this board will actually give the electricity to every motor and to every other device of the drone that needs electricity, that needs the current. So here, as you can see, uh, some wires go to the ESCs, ESC, which is electronic speed controller. Uh, those devices will control the speed of each motor and based on the signal that's coming from the flight controller. So these flight controllers uh, sends the signal to the, each ESC and uh, the ESC will convert the signal into the voltage output for the motor. These motors are brushless and uh, they are they are using three wires and the current alternates between these wires and it makes them rotate to a certain direction. Uh, of course, you have a radio transmitter as well as radio receiver and uh, you can send control commands by transmitter to the drone. Uh, if you want, you can connect FPV camera, which is the first person view camera and uh, use FPV goggles like these ones to see from the first person view uh, how the drone flies and you can control the drone uh, based on this, based on what you see. And FPV camera is connected to the FPV transmitter. So there is, now there are two channels of operation between the drone. So this the first channel is RC and the second one is FPV. Uh, one of the examples of the additional devices is the gripper, uh, the thing that can grab some balls and some other objects uh, used for competitions and for some research uh, things. Uh, well, I think, I've, yeah, there's also LED strip that you can program with your Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi has a, a wire that's coming from it to the LED strip, and uh, you have the power that's coming from power distribution board there is a special five volt output to the draw, um, to the LED strip, as well as another one for Raspberry Pi. And uh, of course, laser range finder is connected to Raspberry Pi. I think uh, for me, it's pretty easy after a few, work, few years of working with this hardware. Uh, and if you are new, you can use it as a, an example of how you can build the, your drone's architecture. And uh, how about physics and dynamics of the flight? Uh, well, basically, it's all, all, all that you can control in the drone is 
the rotation of your motors that have uh, propellers connected to them. And those four uh, rotations will determine how the drone is moved in space. So um, only by altering the speed of each propeller, you can have all, the, all kinds of different movement in space. Uh, for example, of course, you have a force uh, that uh, is applied to each arm of the drone. And uh, this here is thrust. So each motor produces thrust and uh, the, the higher the speed, the more thrust. But with thrust, uh, there is also torque and the higher the rotation speed, the higher the torque. And you have to cancel out each torque uh, to have a neutral torque for the drone if you want to hover without moving uh, sideways. So this is uh, accomplished by having different motor rotations of, on each motor. And for example, uh, here, I think the, for, the front of the drone is uh, maybe here, but maybe in other place. Uh, it doesn't really matter for now. But as you can see, this motor is rotating clockwise as well as this one. But this motor is rotating counterclockwise, and this one is rotating counterclockwise. So there is a pair of motors that rotate clockwise, which is this pair, and a pair of motors that rotate counterclockwise. Of course, propellers are uh, also different. So those are similar propellers. They are equal and uh, have, uh, they will produce thrust when rotated clockwise. And those are the opposite propellers, so they are mirrored and they produce thrust when rotated counterclockwise. And uh, in order for you to cancel out uh, all the, well, every component may be imperfect. So there may be some imbalance in propeller or you can damage some propellers and you will have to rotate it faster in order to produce the same level of thrust. And uh, if uh, there was, they're all were uh, rotated at the same speed, this will cause, this, this would cause a drop of the drone. So it will dip on one side and uh, fall down. But uh, the flight controller ex accepts all the sensors data to maintain stable flight, even with imperfections of each component and it is changing dynamically based on how the drone is positioned in space. And this is the diagram that shows how you can move the drone based on the rotation speed of each motor. For example, if you control throttle, which is uh, this on the left stick usually, so the higher th your throttle is, the faster all the motors spin. And this uh, example shows that if you move throttle up, all the motors will spin faster and the drone will move up. If you move it down, the drone will move down as well. Uh, if you want to pitch the drone, so pitch is actually putting your nose down or up and it will cause moving forward or backward. And if you want to move forward, you will have to temporary, temporarily uh, increase the speed of the back motors. So here you increase the speed of the back motors as well as you decrease the speed of the front motors. And, uh, uh, but in order to stay on the same height, you will actually have to not only increase and decrease them by the same amount, but you will have to actually uh, increase the total amount of thrust because when you are and if, if your drone is at an angle to the ground, the same amount of thrust will not be enough to produce um, enough lift to stay on the same height. So they basically, these green ones are not entirely green, they should be a little bit more red, I guess. Uh, and once the drone has reached the angle at which it uh, will move stable, stably, uh, these motors will be rotating at approximately the same speed. So they, they will no longer be uh, red on the back and green on the 
fall on the front. As well as you can move back or the same, but uh, the other models will move faster. So if you want to roll the drone, roll is actually moving that way. I hope you can see it on my camera. And uh, this is the same as pitch, but uh, now you have right motors that spin faster and left motors that spin slower. And for the yaw control is, I think, the most uh, difficult to grasp for the beginners. Uh, for to control yaw, it means to rotate, staying on the same spot and moving your nose to some direction, or look into some other direction. You will have to increase uh, the overall counterclockwise um, torque and the decrease clockwise torque, for example. And uh, it, it, me it will cause the drone to start rotating around. And the opposite thing happens here. And all the imperfections of the flight will be controlled by the algorithms that will take as an input uh, the data from sensors. They don't even need to know the exact speed of, your, of the motors because uh, this can be find by try, trial and error. So it will just keep increasing the throttle, the speed of each motor until it reaches the, the speed that will make it maintain a stable flight. So if you want to learn more about drone dynamics, there is a link to the source. I think I will send you this presentation later and you can read more about dynamics of the flight. All right. The next topic is uh, introduction to ROS. Uh, well, this is most more physical thing. It was more physical thing and uh, how it works on the hardware level. But now we'll uh, switch to software level and uh, I will introduce you to ROS. And uh, what is ROS? It uh, stands for Robot Operating System. It's a system that you usually install on some uh, Linux based operating system and the drone has a its own linux operating system on on board so but basically ros is uh, capable of distributed uh, robotic systems so, so multi-agent robotic system is something like that each uh, of these robots has may have ros i don't know uh, exactly about these ones, they may use something different than ROS, but you can pretty much do the same thing with ROS and have these drones not only operate on, the, on their own, but also to communicate with each other or communicate with the server, the ROS server that uh, will connect to each one of them. And not only ground robots are acceptable, but also also the aero robots. And for the robot itself, uh, ROS will actually help you to glue together all the different sensors and devices of a robot and have a great uh, API for working with them and for routing information and data uh, between one system to the other and exchange some messages. So you can combine different sources of data like IMU, inertial measurement unit, camera and GPS and 3D sensor and uh, use all these angles and positions to, and fuse them together to get local or global position of your robot. And uh, ROS makes it much easier uh, to work with. So basic concepts of ROS are, uh, well, let's start with nodes. You can think of, no, of a node as a program that is running and uh, this program can exchange information with other nodes, with other programs. So you can exchange messages between nodes and one node may be controlling motors, for example, a node that will control like the speed of certain motor. Or uh, another node may control camera. For example, it can 
get information from camera and uh, uh, finding some positions of your robot based on this image. And uh, uh, this, each node should do one thing good. And uh, this um, allows you to reuse your node uh, by communicating with other nodes. For example, if you have uh, if you have to get some information that other node will be aware of, you can uh, subscribe to a topic that the other node is publishing. For example, this node may be publishing some uh, data from laser rangefinder. So laser rangefinder, there, this is, there is a laser rangefinder on the drone. And uh, this node does only one thing and it does it very well it just gets raw data from the sensor on the, on the level of operating system. And then it publishes a special type of messages to, the, to a certain topic. And a topic is a, uh, there is a path to each topic and each other node has the access to, to any topic. And each other node can actually publish to uh, each topic. And, uh, this topic will probably be called like rangefinder data and uh, other nodes if they need to up, uh, for the operation if they need some data from rangefinder they can just subscribe and get this information from this topic and what are services well uh, services are actually uh, something like a function that is uh, performed on the server service server node. So a node can not only be a publisher, it can also be a ser service server. And uh, each service has also, uh, does also have a name and you can call each service by a name from other node and uh, request some data. Uh, so you request this data, it goes to this uh, node it gets executed and it gives you the response and you get this response. But services can not only uh, operate as messages, they, they can also do perform some things. For example, in Clover, there is a service to fly to a certain point and you will not only get the response, but you will also see the drone flying somewhere else. And uh, full documentation can be found here, but um, quick note, this is the documentation for ROS2, which is a more modern, modern uh, but less tested version of ROS. We uh, use actually ROS1. Uh, so this documentation is not the exactly that, you, uh, that we use in Clover, uh, but I use this one because it has very great uh, visualizations and you can look at other articles, for example, topics, uh, understanding ROS2 topics. Uh, they work pretty much well similarly as uh, topics in ROS1. So nodes can publish messages to topics and other nodes can subscribe. And uh, here a message is getting published to this to the corresponding topic and the other nodes get these messages. And in the, and the other node can also publish this information, this message to topic and all the other nodes will get this message. So you can think of a topic as maybe a group chat or a group talk where you, where you can only pu uh, publish one type of messages with different information. And all the ones that, who are subscribed to this chat will get this information. And based on that, on the subscriber, uh, they will perform some functions or some other actions in this, in each node. All right, uh, services, well, I think I've already explained what services are. You have a node that is a service server and the service client. You give, you send the request and you get the response. And there, if you have different nodes that may want to use this service it's also possible you can send this request and give 
and get the response to the corresponding node. And uh, what else is here? Yeah, I think actions are also a powerful tool for more complex tasks, but uh, we do not use actions in Clover, so I will not cover this topic for now. And you can read more about actions in the official documentation. All right. Sorry. Uh, and I will go deeper into into rows when uh, I start working uh, with hardware or with the simulator. So the next topic is, well, the next topic is which subjects you can learn with drones. So drones are complex systems and you can learn many different things uh, with drones. And let's begin with physics. Uh, I think you already saw similar images in this presentation. So you may, if you want to understand like the physics in general, you can uh, use drone as a model for that. And there are of course some formulas that will help you to understand physics more. And uh, drones are great for, for this type of purposes. The next one is control theory. So, uh, how to control a certain system? Well, you have some input uh, data and output data, and uh, drones are based on control theory, a lot of it. And the main thing about control theory in drones is speed controllers. So those are two videos that explain speed controllers uh, on the draw on as an example of drones and uh, you can see how this little model will behave based on what speed parameters you apply so you can watch these with videos later if you want and uh, Yeah, in, in order to work and to uh, set your drone up correctly, you need to understand some of speed controller. So this is very, a very good topic to learn. The next one is, wait, yeah, computer science and software engineering. Uh, yeah, allowing the drone to do things is, uh, mostly software engineering because uh, you cannot do such complex tasks by only hardware. Uh, here you can see some hybrid drone swarm set up and uh, it's uh, a, gr a difficult task for programmers, computer scientists and software engineers. Here how it may look like in the real world application of a drone show. And I think you, if you want to do something with drones, you have to understand uh, computer science and you need to write software. And this is a great application for drones. Uh, of course, robotics, uh, drones are actually flying robots and you can learn many things related to robotics based on drones. Uh, you can equip uh, drones with different uh, other parts and this is all robotics. Uh, yeah, CAD, uh, you can uh, design your own parts and you can implement this in uh, your tasks or, uh, for example, you, there is competitions where uh, CAD design is uh, one of its parts, like this one, and you will basically learn, if you want to build your own drone, you may want to uh, build a frame yourself, which is an interesting task, I think it's very good to uh, do it yourself. Uh, operating systems. Uh, yeah, of course, the, our drones, for example, have our Linux operating system on them and you will have to work with console, with terminal and uh, do certain things. So another great application. All right. 
Uh, and now the next topic is projects. I think uh, Elena, are you here? Elena may tell you yeah. more about projects and uh, let's wait for her screen. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you about project. Uh, I'm using uh, Clor Clor's documentation. Uh, the first project is a drone show. Um, this project was made in uh, Stanislavski Theater. I show you a short video about this. Um, 12 drones perform on the same stage with the artist. Can you make a full screen? Uh, uh, you can look at the quote uh, and repeat yourself. Um, almost all projects are open source. Uh, the second project is engineering, copter spheric quads. Um, uh, that is uh, played its spherical protection, which uh, makes the drone safe. And uh, you can, uh, for example, deliver candy to children. This is uh, part of uh, this one. And uh, second uh, project is uh, 3D scanning drone. Uh, here you can find your tutor, Timothy. Uh, Timothy and a colleague uh, used uh, Raspberry Pi. 3D sensor, drone, and flight program. Yes, I show you a part of this video. Um, Yes, and uh, several projects from the Copter Hack project context. Um, that, uh, oh, Lena, before actual temp. Lena, before yeah. uh, before it, or maybe some after. So, please, could you tell us about what is it, Copter Hack? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um. That's uh, actual term. Um, that's uh, drone can detect a person uh, with a mask or a without mask. Let's see as a picture. Um, second uh, project is uh, 3D printed generative design frame. You can look uh, some picture about this project. And uh, you can see different frames. Um, people that uh, team presented a, a new way uh, to design and manufacture drone frames. Another project is a drone copter hack by IT makers. That is a graffiti drone. Uh, here is step by step guide of how to prepare this project. You can repeat this. And uh, see it's pleasing quadcopter that also have a guide have to design this project. Yes, uh, if you have uh, own idea for the project, you can uh, participate in, in the Copter Hug uh, 2022 competition. Uh, here, uh, information about this contest. Um, 
application uh, currently be accepted and you can find more uh, information about project, about company case competition, that is team project. Uh, and uh, it have um, several uh, stage uh, and now we have quality stage. If you have a question, I'm ready to answer for this. Okay, I think I can proceed with the next topic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. So guys, if you have uh, questions about the copter hack contest or other activities, or maybe you have idea in the drone project, uh, please write us into Telegram group, for example, or directly uh, to us. Okay, Timofey, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the next topic is the simulator. And I think uh, I hope Timofey. you... Oh, Tim, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, so, guys, uh, we um, now we have opportunity to provide a short uh, coffee break time for you. Yeah. So, uh, if you, but, but uh, it depends only on your on your uh, current conditions <laughs> and feelings. So, guys, uh, if you uh, want to have a break time. So please write the message plus, or or if you don't uh, don't need it, please write a minus. <laughs> oh, great guys! So are you? Oh, you have more energy. <laughs> okay, okay. So to my face, they don't want uh, to have a break time. <laughs> are you ready to continue? Timothy. Yeah, this is great. And I hope you all have installed the simulator already. And uh, I will show you um, the, our documentation about the simulator. So this is clover.coex.tech uh, simulator simulation HTML. So you can find it in the programming and then scroll down to simulate simulation and uh, virtual machine setup. So you need to download uh, the VMware, a VMware player or VMware workstation. I guess VMware player is the best thing you can get. And then uh, download and install the image. Where is this? Uh, you can download the image in the repository. And here, uh, the latest release is 0 0.4.1. Um, don't download this one. It's uh, not working yet. So that it's a pre-release. And uh, soon we will be, we will release uh, a latest version as v version 1.0. Uh, so now I hope you all have this one, 0 0.4.1. And uh, you need to install, first install the VMware software. Let me show you this program. So VMware Workstation, this one. I have two versions. So this is how it looks like usually. Uh, and if you have a Mac, you need to get VMware Fusion. It's called VMware Fusion. Uh, it's the version that will work on Mac. So here, uh, you need to open a virtual machine, not create a new one, but open a virtual machine and uh, proceed to the file 0.4.1 that you've downloaded. Uh, then you can click open and uh, select where you will unpack this thing. I will browse to, to the other place. 
uh, it's going to be here and call it Ox Studica. Yeah. And import. It will take a few minutes. And while it's important, importing, uh, I will tell you what to do next. So after you import, well, after the finish, you finish the importing, uh, you don't play this virtual machine. You need to configure it. For example, by default, it has not enough uh, RAM and not enough CPU provided. And this simulator requires a lot of CPU and RAM. And uh, you have to have a computer that has at least eight gigs of RAM, better to have 16. So if you have 16 gigs of RAM, it is, this is great. If you have four, I don't think you will be able to run this. Yeah, if you have some error like this one in the chat, you just click retry and it will go away. Uh, yeah, eight gigabytes is okay, uh, but it's better to have 60. So eight will be enough. You will just specify four gigabytes for your virtual machine and the remaining, remaining four will be for your operating system. Yeah. So how, what about the CPU? It's better to have um, like Intel Core i5 or i7, like generation four, five and uh, later. Um, yeah, and as for video, uh, you, it's better to have like one gig of video RAM and I will show you all the settings once it uh, gets installed. Yeah, so you have to have a quite powerful computer, not the most powerful, but uh, a well-working computer to run uh, this virtual machine. Okay. So this is how, yeah, this is the error that may occur. You just click retry and uh, it will go without the error. So as for CPU, of course, it has to be at least four. If you have 16 gigs, you can have eight which is the best thing you can do. It will not use the whole eight gigs. It will use, I think, six and something. A number of cores, uh, you should use the, maybe the half of you, what you have on your PC. So for example, if you have, let me open the uh, process export manager. Yeah, half of uh, cores. So here in the performance, what you see in the cores uh, section, so it's cores, processors section. I have six cores. And I will use uh, half of it, of it, which is three. And there is a logical 12, but I will still have to use three because I think it's working with not logical, but with physical, so um, yeah it's better to measure it to the physical because otherwise you may uh, accidentally have the whole CPU for virtual machine, which is not good. And the virtualization has to be turned on and uh, has to be enabled. And if it is disabled, you need to enable it in your BIOS settings or UEFI, UEFI settings. It depends on the computer provider, uh, maybe a different task for uh, different computers. And here, uh, the virtual machine is installed. This one is what I just installed, and the other ones are uh, actually the previous ones. And uh, one moment, I need to disable a robot that is running behind me.
All right, I'm back. And now let's uh, edit virtual machine settings. Uh, edit virtual machine settings. And here, first thing is memory. Uh, I have a lot of- Oh, Timofey, uh, just yeah. a moment. Uh, we have a question uh, in our chat about yeah. uh, VRAM. So how much max VRAM? Uh, yeah, I, I told already, well, one gig, gigabyte is okay. So let's begin with RAM, normal RAM. And let's use eight gigs of RAM. Eight gigabytes is 8192 if you have more than 60 i have more than 60 here the, ne the next one is processors so i have six physical cores and i will use three cores here yeah the next one is display uh very important don't forget to click accelerate 3d graphics and here, uh, the graphics memory is uh, one gig. Uh, it will not use more than this, so at least one gigabyte. So it's better to have the computer with at least two gigabytes of video memory and uh, use one for the virtual machine. The next option is hidden in options here. And uh, don't forget to do this. Click options, then VMware tools, and click synchronized guest time with host. Guest is actually the guest operating system, your virtual machine time. And you will synchronize this time with your host operating system, which is your actual operating system time. It's important to have uh, internet working on the virtual machine because when internet is not, well, when the time is off sync, internet may not work. And uh, this is it, you can click okay and uh, you can now run this virtual machine. Uh, click play virtual machine and wait for it to load. Okay. It is loading an operating system. Okay, and now you can maximize it. Uh, what do you mean, can I share virtual machine settings? And what do you mean? Do you mean you want to, you want me to show them again? Or how do you want me to share the settings? Okay, for now, uh, let's keep working. And the first thing, uh, uh, yeah, okay, I can show you the settings uh, real quick and uh, run over them, run through settings again uh, real quick and just make sure everything is correct. So this one is mm. Well, anyway, I will use on the model of the other one. Uh, so the settings are okay. eight gigabytes of RAM if you have more than 16. If you have, if you have eight in total, you will use four. The next one is processors. Use half of your physical cores. And if you have four cores, use two. If you have eight, use four. Then display, use Accelerate 3D graphics, let's tick this one, and uh, use one or two gigabytes of graphics memory. Here it's two, but uh, you, can only, you can also use one. The next one is options and uh, VMware tools, and this tick synchronize guest time with host. And this is it. Uh, you don't need to specify other settings for now. All right. And uh, let's go back to my virtual machine. Uh, first thing you can do is run Gazebo PX4 and see if it loads. Gazebo PX4, uh, Gazebo is the name of the simulator that is used uh, to simulate the world. 
And PX4 is the name of the software, uh, of the firmware of flight controller. This uh, simulator here, it simulates uh, the flight controller. So it's this one thing thinks that it's a real drone. And it uses gazebo as a physical model for, for it. All right, the drone is here. And it is working. You can, you can see LED strip is changing the color. And now you can actually uh, test flight, have a test flight by you, you can open this terminal that, that was opened with the gazebo. And in this terminal, you can type commander take off. Now let me increase the font size and I will type commander take off. Take off. As you can see, hit enter and let's wait for it to take off. You will actually have to restart this later. So this is just for test. Not all the settings are done yet. So this is one may fly not very good. So you, after the first launch, you need to restart the simulator. And uh, I will uh, show you the settings you need to do here. And to land, you need to write here, commander land. As you can see, it's not very stable uh, for now. OK, it's land. What else you can do in this uh, environment? You can, uh, op you can add some objects, like this box or uh, cylinder. I drag them. I click on top of the menu and uh, put, it, put them somewhere on the field. Mm. But after I restart, the simulator, they will be gone. So in order to save this environment, you need to do it separately. OK, I will close now the simulator. How to do that? Open the terminal and hit Control-C, Control-C. And it's starting to close everything. And uh, then I will show you the settings that we need to do. As you can see, there, there were some uh, markers on the ground, and these markers are used to navigate with camera. I didn't, uh, didn't tell you about them yet, but I will. Let me... Let me show you. So what are these markers? If you open our Coex Lower Tech, and open the programming, then fiducial Aruka, fiducial markers, Aruka. And uh, you will see these markers. And here, my best navigation article will show you how to configure your markers to start uh, navigating with them. And this is what your drone will see. And uh, these markers, each one of them will provide some position the position of the drone relative to the ground, to this point on the ground. And combined, these, uh, the position will be more uh, accurate if you combine the data from each marker. All right. And uh, I will show you how to enable this function, functionality in your simulator. So let's uh, open settings. Uh, in file system, if you open home, there is a Katkin WS folder and uh, SRC, Clover, Clover, Launch. And now we are dealing with ROS Launch. So ROS Launch are the files that will tell ROS which nodes to run. And here there is the root no, root launch, which is called clover.launch. If you open this one, uh, it will open with Vim, which is not very useful. So uh, the first 
time you install simulator and this uh, virtual machine, you need to open it with Visual Studio code. And now you will be able to see it better and edit uh, the content. And here uh, you will see some default parameters. Yeah, if, if this thing opens up, you close this here. And this launch file, I think I've already moved to the next uh, topic that I wanted to discuss, which was the ROS architecture, architecture in Clover. So yeah, this is the next topic. And uh, let's begin with ROS launch. So if you have uh, true on some parameters, uh, it says that they will load later. If there is false, they will not load. So for now, there is optical flow, uh, which is the system that uses camera and laser range finder, and it will operate on any type of surface. Uh, it will make the drone fly more stable. And this system works by default. But to detect markers, you need to enable Aruka, so here, instead of false, you will type true. You can follow my steps I, and uh, you will see the same result. Aruko is true. Mm -hmm. Then I also want to show you block programming. So here blocks has to be set to true. And uh, this is it for Clover launch. But let's uh, look at this file more deeply. So what happens if you uh, enable Aruka? Here, the Aruka argument has the value of true. And if you scroll down to the line 36, there is a commented outline. So this line is, com is a comment just made for, uh, for you to see what, they, what this thing does. And this line will include some file if arg aruka is true. So this thing, if arg aruko, means that if aruka equals true, then this will include the file called aruka.launch. Otherwise, it will not include this file. So basically, uh, you can in, in one launch file, you can include other launch by this type of links. And you can determine whether to enable them or disable by arguments, the named argument. And blocks, it's true now. Let's see blocks, if is there main camera, LED, clover blocks, okay, node, name clever blocks, package clever blocks, type clever blocks, output screen, uh, if arg blocks. Well, this is another ROS package that will be uh, enabled if argument blocks is true. And uh, this whole file is actually an XML document. So if you are familiar with XML, you will be easy to, it will be easy for you to navigate in this type of file. So this is just an XML file, but, the, uh, but it has uh, dot .launch suffix. And uh, all the other nodes are whether included or not included, depending on their parameter, if some argument is enabled. All right, now you need to save this, control S or file save, and you can close Clover Launch. And now you can open Aruk Launch because you need to edit this file as well. And here, uh, what, to, uh, what to change? Let's uh, look at the article. Uh, the article says the map based navigation that you have to, in the file, called Clover Launch, you have to set Aruka to true, which I already have done. And in the 
arrow.launch, there is arrow detect true, arrow map true, and arrow VPE true. Let's check this out. Arrow detect is true, but the others are false. So I will copy the true value from here and paste it there. Oh, there and there. Oh, Timofey, could you zoom in the font of terminal? Yes. Please. Thank you. So now uh, you can see that I have enabled Aruka map and Aruka VPE. It works the same way as it worked in the previous launch file. And uh, now let's check out the Aruka map estimate Aruka map pose. So this node is called Aruka map. Well, basically, this Aruka launch will run several nodes. The first node is called Aruka detect. It will only detect Aruka markers. They only detect them and uh, nothing else. Then Aruka map, estimate Aruka map pose. And here in Aruka map, there is the parameter called map. And there is a link to the file called map.txt. And if we compare this file map.txt with the actual map on our field, it will be different. So we need to change this map.txt to the other file. And I'll know in advance which file should be here. This file should be called cmit, smith.txt. And this file will actually contain uh, all the information about Aruka markers, how they are arranged relative to certain point in space. I will show you this file right now after I save this, uh, after I save this file. So Aruka launch changed this to true and this to true and also changed the line 27 and wrote Smith.txt here. Control S to save. And, I, and now I will show you this Smith.txt file. It's stored if you open home, Katkin WS, SRC, Clover, Aruka Pose. This is another ROS package, uh, map. And there are four files. The, they are the default files and uh, you will find them in any Clover release. And if you open this file, you will see that it has a list of numbers. Each number represents something. So the first number is the Aruka marker ID. The Aruka marker with ID zero has the size of 0 0.33 meters, which is 33 centimeters. And it is located in the coordinate 0x, 9y, and 0z. And the rotation on each axis is zero rotation in x, zero in y, and zero in z. And you can read about this in the article in map, in marker map definition here. Map is defined in a text file. Each line has the following form. Marker ID, marker size, X, Y, Z, Z angle, Y angle, X angle. Well, I think uh, I may be, I might have been wrong in the order of the angles, but anyway, uh, the angles are here. Yeah, Z angle, Y angle, and X angle. And, uh, Oh, I think I need to change the language or, yeah, the, there is an error. Sorry, we will need to change this part later. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there is a question, a good question. Why is the marker number 17 has this hashtag before? It's because the marker uh, number 17 is may cause some troubles. It's a troublemaker marker. Uh, it's because if you look at how this marker looks, 
let me show you the link where you can find chef.me slash Uh Yeah, this is the generator for markers. I will send you this link to everyone in the Zoom. Uh, if you look at the marker with the ID17, it looks like a white square in the black square. And the Aruka detect may falsely detect this marker somewhere else because uh, maybe on your keyboard, for example, if you uh, point your camera to your computer keyboard, pretty often it will find markers even though there, there are no markers because any shape that is squared that has a smaller square of lighter color in the center will count as the marker number 70. So if you exclude this marker from the map by commenting out it from this uh, list, it will not try to find it. And even, even if it finds it, it will not use this, uh, the position relative to this marker in the estimation of the drone position, which uh, will <clears throat> increase the stability of your flight. Okay, and uh, you can actually make your own map. Yeah, I mean, physical map. You can use any markers. So you can lay, out, lay them out the way you want, but it's better to follow some rules. And then you will generate this file. There is a comment, common line comment, that will generate markers map for you. And this command is called ROS run Aruka pose genmap.py. And here in length x, y, dist x, dist y first, here you will uh, need to uh, change them to actual values. And uh, the example values are here. So length of the marker, which is 0 0.33 in the case of this virtual machine. Then X is the number of markers on the X axis. The Y is number of markers on the Y axis. This X is distance between centers of neighbor markers on the X axis. This Y is the distance between centers of uh, between sensor or centers of markers on the y-axis. First marker is the number of the marker that's uh, on the top left corner. Let me now uh, show you how it works in the simulator. I will run Gazebo here. Okay, and let me show you. The X axis is going, let me uh, display the axis for you. I choose this uh, tool. And if I choose, if I select marker field, the red is X axis, this is Y, and this is Z. So Z is up. And this marker, this one, has the ID zero. And in, in this file, in the, let's open it again. The marker with, with ID zero is located in the zero X and nine Y. We can check this out first. How do we know it's zero? I know how to check this out. If you look at the marker with ID zero, it will look this way. And this marker looks the same way. 
So this marker is definitely zero. And how about its position? Let me scroll it out. Uh, it's lagging a little bit, uh, but okay. So X goes right and uh, on the X axis, it's a zero. And Y is going this way. So on the Y axis, it's zero, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine meters. And the distance between markers is meter, one meter. And uh, here, as you can see, is just zero and nine. The next marker has the ID of one and nine. None of them are rotated somehow. So this is uh, yeah. So this is the coordinate. And now let's open the Mozilla Web Firefox web browser to find some more information from the Clover drone. And uh, there is a great tool that will show you some visualization in, in the browser. If you go to localhost slash enter, uh, localhost is for, for the simulator. If you are working with the real drone, there will be another uh, there will be an actual IP address that you have to type. And this is Clover Drone Kit Tools. You, will, you can find documentation here, for example. There's documentation. It's inside the Clover. And you can find image topics, which is I what I want now. As you can remember, topics is the way to communicate messages. And one type of the messages is, is image. All the topics that uh, have image type are displayed here. And the first one is image raw. Uh, and now it shows us just black and white squares. But if you take off, you will find out that it's actually our camera view. And I type commander take off. Uh, let's see image raw. Yeah, as you can see, it is showing the camera view. So the simulated camera view. The next topic is, I could detect the bug. Let's see. Yeah, and it has, and now it uh, displays the marker IDs. Some of them are missing sometimes because the drone is kind of far away from the markers and it may lose them from its sight. But once it gets them back, it has uh, the number, the ID of each marker. Then optical flow debug, which is a utility that only detects uh, change between two uh, Con consequent uh, frames, the images from your camera. And uh, if the, it detects some change and uh, knowing the distance between the drone and the ground, it may tell how the drone has moved and it will give the flight controller the information to maintain stable position, to hover on one position. Then you have map image, but I don't uh, recommend you click in this one. You can click snapshot because it's a static image, static image, but uh, when you click it in snapshot, it will give you just one image in a good resolution. So here, this is the map that was defined in here in this file. And uh, here, uh, yeah, this is the image that you get. Uh, if you accidentally use a different map in the physical world, 
uh, with uh, different with what you have in the drone's brain, it will cause a lot of troubles. So make sure these maps match as well as in real drones. So these need to be the same. It's very easy to mess, mess up and uh, have different maps, which will cause, which may cause uh, the crash of the drone. Uh, then you have Aruka map debug, which is similar to Aruka detect debug, but it will also display you the coordinate system of your Aruka map. Here, this one. Okay. And uh, the next thing you can do in this simulator is playing with the terminal. Let's open the terminal. I will open another one. So this one is already busy doing its task. It is uh, simulating. Uh, so this one is busy with the ROS process. And I will open another terminal emulator. Uh, and uh, this one is clean. I can type any comment here and uh, have the results. So first of all, let's uh, see some ROS commands. Mm, let's start with a ROS node list. This is the list of all nodes that are currently working. There is node the node called Aruka Detect, Aruka Map, Clover Blocks, Gazebo, Gazebo GUI, GUI, LED LED Effect, Main Camera, and so on. So there's there are different ROS nodes, and you can uh, get the info for any node, ROS node info. Uh, let's slash Aruka Detect. Enter. And this is the info that you can get. So this node uh, yeah, it publishes the data to uh, not let manager bond and ROS out, and it is subscribed to the clock and not let manager bond uh, topics. And it is the service server for these two services. So this node has two services that you can call. Uh, they, are, they are more system services, so you will not use these services yourself. And some other information about this node. Uh, now let's go to ROS service list. This is the list of services. Uh, very few of them, of them are actually used on the user level. Most of them are system level services. And uh, there is also gazebo services that will only appear in the simulator. And there is no gazebo services on the real drone. And here Aruka map, our Clover blocks and let me find some good service that you can actually use. Oh yeah, this one, Navigate. This is the user level service. You will be able to call it any, any time. And let's get some info about this service. Our service, sorry, info. And if you didn't want to type the whole word, you can start with ROS S tab. No, not like that. Ross S E tab. Yeah, and it will it will complete our service name, and then in tab, and uh, slash navi tab, enter. And this is the info. The node that uh, servers serves this server service is called simple of board. This is the URI and type and the arguments of this service. So in order for this service to work, you need to specify these values when you call it. Uh, let me call the service. ROS service call 
slash navigate spacebar and tab and it uh, completes all the arguments for the service that I will change now. So auto arm, I will say true in order to switch the drone to a certain flight mode, you need to have auto arm true. Uh, and when you take off the first time, you will also need to uh, type auto arm true, but mm, when you already in the air, you don't need to you need to not use auto arm true because it's dangerous. I will tell you later more details about this. And frame ID, what are frames? I didn't tell you about them yet. So basically frame ID is the coordinate system in which you are giving uh, the command. For example, uh, there is a frame ID relative to Aruka map Aruk marker map, and there is x, y, z, zero when in this point, in its uh, bottom left corner. And I think the drone is hanging, is stopped, has stopped working because uh, the propellers are no longer moving. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will need to restart the simulator because, as you can see, there is a problem. Yeah. Oh, Timofey, and please uh, zoom in the terminal. Yeah, yeah, there is a problem. Sometimes it happens uh, and it will not go away and, unless you restart the simulator. So here I press Control C, wait for the simulator to close. It's still closing. Let's just wait a little bit more. Yeah, now it is closed and open again. And uh, my command is still waiting for me to run. So just let's wait a little bit more. All right, now it's working. And the command, let me uh, continue with this one. I shouldn't have done this. All right, so what is the frame ID? Uh, this is the coordinate system that you work with. And uh, there is a frame ID called body, which is the body of the drone. And uh, I will use this one for now because, because uh, before you see our markers, there is no such frame ID. So you cannot take off in Aruka map unless you, the drone has seen this. And uh, body is also always th there. It uses internal sensor to determine its position and uh, you can take off with body. Then speed. Now let's use the speed of one meter per second. Uh, yaw rate and yaw is not what I'm going to use now. And now Z. Let's uh, take off to the altitude of 1.5 meters. X and Y will stay at zero. So I only want to take off to 1.5 meters. And I can hit enter and switch to gazebo to see what it does. Yeah, there is still a problem. And now I'm sure that this problem will be gone when I restart the whole virtual machine. So if you see this type of thing, it uh, will tell you that there is a problem. So I will uh, restart the whole virtual machine and uh, then we will check out again how it takes off. Yeah, you can just close it and power off, then open again. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you maximize the window too early, it will have this small window to get rid of it. You need to minimize it and maximize it again. But now this icons are messed up, which is not a big deal. Launching gazebo and another terminal right away, just to start typing the comment before it is loading. Ross service call. Slash Navi tab, spacebar tab. Yes, and now auto arm true, then frame ID body, body, and speed of one meter. Yeah, zero, zero, and Oh, what is this? Do you see this yellow line? Anyway, Z is 1.5. And hit enter. Now the drone is taking off. And the response message is empty. So this service will not give you any message in response. It will only perform some flight. So let me somehow delete it. I don't know how to do that. Svetlana, do you know how to get rid of this yellow line? Um, I think you can <laughs> erase all. Yeah, okay, I already got rid of it. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, this is how you can call a service from your terminal. Um, this is all done on, on board. And you can also call the service called land. Yeah. Uh, and now let's go to topics. Uh, Ross, do, tab, list, Ross topic list. And this is a long list. There's a lot of topics. And oh, uh, Timothy, uh, could you zoom in the font, yes. please? Yeah, let's see some nice topics. Well, Mavros IMU data. Let's, let's see this one. This is the data from internal sensor. Somebody is, I think somebody is uh, drawing this. Is it? Rostopic, the next comment is Rostopic echo. And uh, it will listen to this topic. And let's uh, echo the topic called slash Mavros slash IMU. And I think there is a, an error, a mistake. Mavros IMU data. Yeah, I forgot. IMU slash data. And yeah, as you can see, this is updating pretty quickly. And the linear acceleration here, as you can see, is 9.8 on Z direction. So it's all, always detecting acceleration because of uh, gravity force. So it's detecting G force all the time. There is an angular velocity and orientation. It's a quaternion actually. And uh, the number of messages that has been since the start. And uh, if you move, these values will move. So if you need to, for some reason in your program, if you need to know the acceleration of your drone, you can subscribe this topic. 
to this topic and uh, you can use this information for in your programs yes uh, wait a second yes uh, and then um, I think yeah, Rostopic Echo, Rostopic. You can also get the information how often does the, how frequently does the message appear in the topic with Rostopic HZ comment. And the average rate is 50, so it's updating 50 times per second. Okay. And uh, for more information on ROS uh, services, which is, I think, the most important thing in uh, Clover and in ROS, you can look for autonomous flight of word article here. And there is a, a Python example we will discuss it tomorrow and API description and all the services that are available, like most of them. That the most useful ones get telemetry navigate navigate global set position set velocity set attitude set rates land and some something else let me share this link with you okay and uh, I think this is for this part we are over and the next part is a mini game I think is it Svetlana uh, yeah so uh, just a moment so guys how are you doing <laughs> yeah if you have so, some questions you can ask them and I will show you the answer yeah so why, while we, we are waiting <laughs> your questions, I would like to uh, remind you about the schedule for today. So, yeah, Timofey, can I interrupt your demonstration screen? Yes. Screen demonstration. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, guys. So... Uh, you are really a strong group, strong team. So uh, we have passed um, the, our first theoretical block. And now we have passed uh, the practical block. Now, uh, now uh, time for mini game. Uh, mini game uh, was developed to, um, to check your knowledge during our first day. So, um, and uh, then when we finish the mini game, we have a one topic about block programming. It will be short. And also we will demonstrate you how it works on the real drone. And finally, we will finish uh, our first day by briefing. So now time for the mini game. And uh, guys, <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready for mini game? Please write into Zoom chat if you want to start. <laughs> Depends on the game. Game is very interesting and it's funny. Uh, I'm sure that you will like it. <laughs> uh, great. Um, okay, guys, other guys. Who is ready to start so for the game you need only your phone or laptop or ipad or other device uh, that has um, internet okay great so i am afraid that you sleep now <laughs> okay it is really good that it's uh, not and uh, we are ready to start our game so lena 
Liana. She has prepared for you very interesting questions. And we will check you, check your knowledge and uh, check your attention. Yeah, Kirill, it's uh, Kahoot time. <laughs> okay, Len Lena, welcome. Yeah, uh, we prepared for you some questions. Uh, do you know this game, Kahoot? Please uh, send any reaction. I just want to show this. Where are you guys? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, yes, firstly, you need uh, to take your smartphone and then uh, add to kahoot.it. Uh, on the on the laptop screen, uh, we will uh, see questions, and on the your smartphone screen, uh, we uh, you need uh, to answer this question. Kahoot dot it. This link, guys, we are waiting you. <laughs> Uh, specific names. <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, oh, Lena, could you um, send into Zoom chat uh, the website address? Yeah, sure. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. You can share it. I will. I will send now. Don't uh, don't interrupt your demonstration screen demonstration. Oh, thank you, Kirill. Yeah. We have an agent 0007, <laughs> like James Bond. And uh, also I will uh, join to the game too, and I will be as master. <laughs> yeah. We are ready to start, or are we waiting for another people? Okay. Uh, I, th I think we can we can wait one minute and then we will start. So guys, you have okay. only 50 seconds to join in our amazing Kahoot. Yeah, Sabotage has joined us. No, no, Kirill, master is mean sensei. <laughs> Okay, guys, 10 seconds to join us. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> Let's fly. <laughs> First question for you. What is the brain of quadcopter? You need to answer on your phone screen. Okay. 
five, three seconds, one. Oh, great. All of people are all right. And who is the first place? 1007. Okay. Lena, could you, next, is, could you increase the volume of, for music, please? Yeah. Second question, which motors rotate clockwise? Yeah, almost. Uh, right. Oh, discharge. Okay. And next question for you Which assist does the drone rotate around? Five seconds. Three seconds, two, one, zero. Yes, only four people, all right. Okay. Next question. What is responsible for the overall rotation speed of the motors? Five seconds, three, two, one. Yes, that is throttle. Scoreboard, oh, new winner. Okay. <laughs> it's a, a second question for you, what is it? I remember, do you remember this? Is the pants that rotate of motors speed rotate? Yes, most of the people were right. Okay, scoreboard, it was changed. Okay, second question, the same question. Seven, five, three seconds. Oh, that's bent right. Okay. Next question. What is a node? Yes, three people are all right. Okay, next question. What is a service? Two seconds. One second, and yes, almost right. And final question for you. What does a nano command mean? Do you know that? One second and open in a text editor. Yes. And our podium. Third place, Master. Second place, Davis. And first place, Dam. 
Z X C. Our congratulations and uh, five and third place. Thank you, guys. <laughs> How is the was? So guys, what do you think about it? It was difficult for you or no? <laughs> if it was uh, very difficult, uh, but you like it, please, uh, uh, please write many pluses into Zoom chat <laughs> or your reaction. <laughs> So it's estimate the difficulty of the question from one to five uh, pluses. <laughs> uh, about me, uh, some questions, uh, my, my answer on uh, some questions was uh, using not knowledge, using only uh, inner feeling <laughs> of it. Oh, great, great, guys. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Liana, for preparing this uh, quest for us. It was really fun and very useful. We hope we will continue tomorrow this game. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, guys, so now... Uh, now we have um, time to continue our, our practice part. So now Timofey will tell you about uh, block programming in Clover. So Timofey, we are waiting you. Yes. Yeah, Thank welcome you. Timofey. But one quick uh, reality check before we begin. I think there was a mistake in the image that I showed you in the presentation, and it's about Yao control. I didn't check it uh, in advance, so I um, have to change it right now. So as you can see, this picture shows uh, rotate left, and let's see how the motors rotate. So these motors is rotating counter or oh, let's go with this one uh, these motors are rotating clockwise at high speed and counterclockwise motor rotating at uh, low speed and the up well the co the clockwise rotation produces counterclockwise rotation for the drone so it's the opposite uh, of the motor rotation and uh, of course this this whole drone should rotate counterclockwise which is left but it's indicated as right so just uh, to say to give you the truth uh, there there is the error the, a mistake in this picture and this this should be rotate right and this should be rotate left and let me just uh, indicate it you I just uh, figured it out on the this game and I didn't notice it before Yeah, now it's correct. It is now rotating right and it is rotating left. So in the in the game, there also was image used from here. So there also was a mistake, uh, which is not Yelena's fault. This is the fault. Oh. So just a so, moment, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. So why you uh, why why you change uh, the direction on the left control? So if uh, rotate left, it's a counterclockwise <laughs> direction, sure. uh, but it's uh, yeah. not left; it's to right. Uh, so look at this motor. This motor is rotating counterclockwise, and it is. Uh, there is a third Newton's law that says each action has the equal opposite directed 
counteraction. It applies to rotations as well. So if a propeller is rotating counterclockwise, it means that the drone will, the base uh, where this propeller is, or the motor is uh, uh, glued to, screwed to, will be rotating clockwise. So this is why this rotation is actually right, and this is left. Uh, okay, but maybe uh, for clear understanding, maybe better to write rotate counterclockwise and rotate clockwise. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, like this. Again, am I right? If you find any mistake here, you can, you have a chance to correct me if I'm wrong. Or am I right now? Thank you, Timothy. Yeah. Thank no. you all, guys. <laughs> okay, that, then let's uh, proceed to uh, the final block of knowledge for today is block programming. And uh, I will demonstrate you how you can access block programming. And it, you can access it after you enabled block programming in Clover Launch, which I did here already. Uh, and I showed you how to do that. And now let's open web browser to open localhost and blocks programming. Here is the block programming user interface and it has a few sections of blocks. The most uh, used ones are flight. And let's drag some of them. The first one is takeoff to one meter and wait for the arrival. And then navigate to point and uh, which point and relative to what? Uh, let's use the point relative to marker's map and the coordinates are 0, 0, 001.5 just to make sure we are in the right direction. So first we will take off to one meter, then we will uh, go to the point 0, 0, 001.5 and wait for the arrival. And the speed of the drone, I will set it to one because 0 0.5 is too slow, especially for the simulation. Uh, then let's uh, have another, well, we actually can copy and paste this one several times to find the desired route for us. Let's go to the, posi to the coordinate two and Y, and uh, we will still need to set Z 1.5 because we want to maintain this height relative to the ground. Then we can go to the coordinate two and two, X and Y. And then let me paste a few more navigates. And you will tell me what is the shape of this route. This is right, that's right, it's square. It's a square and after I finish the square, I can just use land and wait. And let's make it more fun with LED uh, added to each corner. So let's fill with the color after our first uh, point. Yeah, let it be red. <clears throat> we can use fade instead of fill. Uh, okay, now let's use blue. Now let's use white. 
these are the colors of Russian flag or American flag. And in the final point, let it be black, which is no color. So it's not the final. Yeah, this is the final point and it will go black here then it will go to zero zero one point five and land and now it is disconnected because i have no simulator running if i run it it will go connected Let's wait for it to run. And while it is trying to run, yeah, I think I need to try it once again. Yeah. So there are different other sections like logic, if, else, and if it's something, then do. Loops, you can make while loop or some other type of loops for each uh, element in list. Uh, but I think doing this with this type of blocks is a method that takes a lot of space. And there is much shorter way to run this type of programs with Python. Okay, and uh, now let's uh, see. Okay, we have our drone. And let's uh, run the program. I click run and it will ask me, where is this? Let's wait for, for it to respond, it's hanging. Yeah, run program. I click run and let's see the drone is taking off it turned red as you can see and it's going to the coordinate 2 then it's going with the blue color to another one and white color here then it's black it's going there and it's going to land I think I can uh, zoom in closer so we can see LED change. And, uh, but what more, what's more important is that this program will actually produce Python code. And if you click this Python section, there is this program written in Python. Uh, this is not the most optimal way to write Python programs, but anyway, this program will work. And you can see how to write this type of programs in Python. There is a function called navigate weight and the land weight. And you can see that this function is called with certain parameters. And the set effect is a service uh, that you create proxy for. And this is the type, the things I will discuss with you tomorrow. So for now, we will not go deep into Python. And uh, this, the same thing will work on the real clover, on the real drone. So let me introduce the real drone now. Uh, I will switch from the screen sharing to the camera sharing and then go back to the screen. Uh, let me close the simulation. Yeah, as you can see, I have a, the clover here. Uh, and uh, 
I tested it before this uh, webinar, so it should work. And uh, but it's not configured uh, the way I want it to. So for now, I will turn it on and uh, configure it, uh, finish the configuration process, and. Uh, a few important steps in working with the, the real drone is first you need to turn on the transmitter and then you will turn on the drone. And one more thing, don't turn on it outside of the flight zone. So I will just, uh, for demonstration purposes, I will turn it on here and uh, I always keep my controller near, near me. And I will immediately put it in the flight zone. So I'm turning on the clover and it is starting to load. For now, let me put it in the flight zone and I will go back here. Okay. I also have the camera on the flight zone, which I will show you right now. So this is the flight zone and this is the drone that I just put there uh, and as you can see LED strip is lighting up and the drone is working. Now let's connect to the drone via Wi-Fi. Uh, this computer is connected uh, to the internet with Ethernet so Wi-Fi will not so the connection with you will not go away but if Wi-Fi is the only source of internet, uh, there, then you cannot uh, use anything else because there is no internet on the clover. Uh, let's uh, find out the networks. And there should be clover and some four random numbers, random digits. So I click connect. And instead of typing in pin code, there is no pin code. You need to use the security key uh, to connect to the drone. So click this button and enter the Clover Wi-Fi password. I will type you the password. It's Clover Wi-Fi. Next. And yes. So the password is... Uh, let me see where is this one. over Wi-Fi. Um, and it's probably has already connected. Uh, let's now open the browser and open 192.168.11.1. Yes, and we are in the Clover tools. And by the way, this version is a little bit more advanced because we already released uh, the version 0 0.22 uh, for the firmware mm, as a as the image for Raspberry Pi, but not for the simulator. And the simulator version is coming soon, so stay tuned. Uh, all the changes that you will see here are all, all, all going to be available in the simulator as well. Okay, uh, so here you can open a web terminal I will open web terminal in the other tab and it requires password. The password in web terminal is raspberry. Raspberry. So I will show you. It's like that raspberry. And uh, you will need to finish the process 
the setting up process for the clover. As you remember, we need to specify the Aruka map. So how do you open the launch files without graphical user interface? It's just in common line. You can use <coughs> a few commands uh, to navigate in, in this shell. So if you type CD, it means change uh, directory. Uh, and you will type uh, the directory that you want to enter. So it's a C tab, it's got in double S, then SRC, S tab, then C tab, then C tab again. Then uh, you need to put slash here because it didn't do it automatically, then L and tab. And now you are in the launch directory. And you can see LS will give you the list of files and folders in the current folder or directory. And you need to open Clover Launch, which is nano Clover tab. And familiar interface. So you need to enable, let's enable blocks. You can only navigate with your keyboard, not with mouse. So mouse will not affect this cursor. Enable blocks, then enable Aruka. All right, and uh, this is it for, yeah, this is it for this file. Control S, then Control X. All right. Uh, the next file is going to be nano aru tab, aru tab launch. All right. And we need to enable aru map. and the Roku VPE. Also, <clears throat> as you can see, in this version, you have this map TXT put it on the top of the file. Previously, it was uh, there. Where is this? Yeah, map, arc map. So you don't need to type it, find it here. You just type it. Uh, on top in this list of parameters. So I will create another map uh, for for today, and I will call it map2. There is no map2 file yet, but I will create it soon. So map2.txt, control S, control X, and now I need to generate this map2. Uh, let's find uh, the article called fiducial markers and map-based navigation. And let's find the mm, comment, this comment, yeah, cross run. I will copy this one and uh, control shift V uh, because control v, v will not work. Only control shift V will. And here I need to change the parameters. So I don't have, my markers are 35 centimeters instead of 33. So I change it to 35. Then I have, I think I have four markers on the X axis. We can check this out. So X axis goes uh, this direction. So this is zero. One, two, three, four. Four markers on the X direction. And uh, let's change it to four. And how many on the Y direction? One, two, three, four. Wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's four and seven. The distance is the same, one meter and one meter, and the zero is the first marker number. Uh, then minus O test map.txt. This is the name of the new file. I will change it to map2.txt. Enter. All right. And let's go check this out. I will go back uh, up to two directories. So cd slash. Uh, CD uh, space, then two, two dots will go back one directory. And I can repeat the previous program by putting arrow up, arrow up, enter. And LS, I need to go to Aruka pose. So CD Aruka pose slash map, enter LS. And as you can see, there is map to the TXT. It, it wasn't there before. So if I open with nano, 
map to that GXT, I'll get uh, the new decorated map 0 0.35. All right, control X to exit and CD enter to just go to, uh, to the home directory. Okay, now we need to restart the Clover service. To do this, we type um, sudo systemctl restart clover and uh, the process the setup process is is completed now we wait for the service to run again and we will check out the image topics let's update it image raw there is an image of course map image snapshot there is a map and this is the same map as i see oh and as you can see there is a marker number 17 which is not good i need in the in the best case scenario i would get rid of it but for now let it be there it uh, it doesn't cause problems every time so it may be fine uh what next uh, let's open the blocks program blocks programming and let's create a, a simple task uh, just similar to what we did previously and let it go to the markers map 1.5 then control c control v control v and uh, go to so it will be a triangle now oh no not like that not like that rather uh it's uh, going to be a triangle not the square so and i can also change the led color so let's fill it with white here and then we'll Fill it with let's uh, have some green okay uh, the next part is get ready to the flight so how do you get ready to the flight it's important it's an important step uh, if you have set up the clover properly which i didn't show you completely how to do it's a pre installed pre setup clover so you have a switch on the controller that will change the flight modes and you need to change to put the switch in the middle position and if you want to take over the control of the drone uh, you will switch it up and it will go to the stabilized flight mode also, you have a kill switch here in is SWA. If something goes terribly wrong, I can kill switch the drone. It will stop propellers immediately and the drone will fall. I don't want to do it, but sometimes it's necessary. And, uh, after, and the throttle level should be a little bit below the middle. So not the bottom position, but a little bit below middle position because when you take the control the throttle will go to the drone and it will if it's uh, in the lower position the drone will fall down which is not what i want so just make sure you are ready for the flight and i see the drone is looking good i can also test it in the position flight mode which is uh, the middle position of the stick uh this switch i can test it just to make sure all the system work correctly if it keeps the position then uh the program will work fine as well so let me show you how it flies in the position flight mode mm, i will show you the screen and yeah uh, let me take off, then I will switch to position flight mode and the drone should maintain its position. Oh. 
Okay, uh, there is a little delay here, so you will see that it's uh, going to hover on one place. Yeah, it's hovering now. If there wasn't camera, oh, I think it's, it went down a little bit, but anyway, it's working. I switched it back and uh, let me take off again. Okay, now let's uh, test the program. I will click run here and then switch to real link. Yeah, and I think uh, for some reason the LED strip got turned off, but now it's back, back on. All right, click run, run program and change. Oh, yeah, there, there is a problem. Yeah, there is a problem. Let's, uh, let me take the drone to see what's happening. Uh, so uh, while to my PA at the flight zone, so some words about this flight zone. Uh, this flight zone is located uh, on the uh, Moscow Polytechnic University. And uh, this university has a drone laboratory and provides uh, um, educational courses for the adults, for the teachers and trainers and also for school students who, uh, who, plan, to, uh, who, who plan to join to, the, to this university. And for their students, for university students, uh, this university provides the research activity uh, in, drone, uh, in drone development area. Yeah, short message. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Let me perform a quick test before I run the drone again. This oh yeah, test. Timothy, and just one moment. So we have uh, not more time. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, please, uh, please try to be- Yeah, it will quickly. be one, one okay. try and Rosiris uh, call slash get telemetry. I will just get the telemetry to make sure the speed is zero. Yeah, I think we are ready to go. I will just run the program without testing it before the flight and uh, hopefully it will work. All right, uh, let's run it and I will switch to real link. Run, real link. Yeah, it's working now, and uh, it will show soon. Okay, I, I had to have some problems with the stream, but anyway, uh, it did fly the program. Uh, a little bit unstable, but the program is finished. Okay, uh, I think we are done for today. Svetlana, do you have some more words to add? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, so, um, thank you all for this first day of our webinar. Thank you, Timofey. Thank you, Lena, of course. And um, yeah, so uh, today, today is, is, was this very, very difficult day, I think, because uh, we uh, gave you uh, many information. And uh, thanks for your questions. 
the questions uh, helps us uh, to answer on it and um, prepare our materials uh, is better for it and also it's a good way to reach out the best understanding uh, of uh, all technologies so guys uh and uh, mm, yeah thank you for your feedback informative yeah very informative seminar um uh, a good question what is the plan for tomorrow <laughs> timofey please help us what is the plan for tomorrow yeah so oh. I, I disabled my mic so the plan for tomorrow is let's uh, let me open the schedule so we will uh, start programming this the drone in python and uh, i think this is the main part of the plan for tomorrow and we will also uh, i will also give you the introduction to computer vision so, yeah, and I will also show you how to change the world in Gazebo in the simulator and how to add some objects and models and how to save it uh, so you can reuse it later. Uh, and uh, we will find colored objects on the scene. So based on their color, we will find where they are. And uh, I think this is it for tomorrow. And uh, it's going to be, I think, more difficult than today, uh, but get ready for it. I hope you grasp it better. Uh, yeah, so, and also I would like, we would like to tell you about the, uh, our future activities, such as the copter hack and other competition. Uh, when you can uh, apply and participate uh, during the next season and uh, some advices about your um, about your educational trajectory so how you what about your start and how you can uh, teach the students for example if you if it will be interesting for you uh, and also if you Mm, prepare some questions uh, about uh, the practical materials or maybe um, other topics, uh, we will be glad to answer on it, of course. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I would like uh, to say you uh, thank you, first of all. And also, we have a tradition uh, about the homework at the final. <laughs> but now the summer time uh, in Russia, and uh, many students has a vacation time, and we uh, and we uh, and we think that homework for the summer time uh, it's uh, uh, it's a higher level. So that is why we uh, would like uh, to wish you a relax after this day and prepare for the next day. So uh, if you want to get maximum experience, uh, you can repeat all steps that we that Timofey uh, showed and demonstrated to you to, today. Uh, uh, or I'll also you can ask uh, any questions during the next day and uh, in the future days uh, in our Telegram groups. So, and uh, finally, finally, we have uh, one more tradition. So it's, it, uh, it means uh, say goodbye <laughs> uh, together. So uh, if you uh, can turn on your cameras, uh, will be great and we say uh, goodbye uh, you can unmute your microphone of course uh, goodbye in your native language will be good <laughs> will be funny too oh great great 
Oh, I see Natasha, I see Kirill, Davis, Trey, Pars. Yeah, number of attenders, uh, some degrees, but it's uh, okay. <laughs> the strong team stay on during the all seminar for today. Okay, guys, so if you're ready, you can unmute your microphones and say goodbye in English or in your native language. For example, in Russian, it will be пока, bye-bye. Пока-пока. <laughs> goodbye. Пока. Пока. Чао, até logo. <laughs> Bye, bye, bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.